Yeah. It's nine minutes after seven o'clock. You're listening to Kai Biz here on Kai 959. Time for one of my favorite conversations that we have here on the show. Pivot point. It's an opportunity for us to engage with individuals who are key leaders within our business fraternity in South Africa. Skulk Milan. Maybe a name that might not be very familiar to you, but if you think about Bright Rock, its unique positioning from an insurance point of view, it really does touch the lives of many South Africans in making sure that they match our needs as a life insurance company. So much success has been attained within this business that was founded over 15 years ago, has metamorphosized to meet industry needs, and since then has actually been bought out by one of its competing or competitors at a much more bigger scale in South Africa. So joined in studio now by Skalk Milan, the CEO of Bright Rock. Such a pleasure to have you with us, sir. Oh, thank you, Gugu, and thanks for having me. I'm excited to speak to you. I was practicing my Afrikaans before you walked in. Ek het Afrikaans tweede taal vir redenaas gedoen. That sounds very good. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, I tried. Uh, but such a pleasure to have you, and I think, Skalk, for many South Africans, Jeez, your story is one of phenomenal growth. I remember hearing a bright, about Bright Rock a few years ago when I worked at uh, MoneyWeb and Alec Hogg was actually yeah. having very bold conversations with you about the insurance environment in South Africa, specifically uh, long-term insurance, which is the area that you played in. And to now see that you found an opportunity to uh, grow this business into such a gem that Sunlam comes along and says, hey, we'd like to buy you out. It's quite a journey, right? No, it's been absolutely incredible. I mean, when we got together towards the end of 2010 already, um, we started having conversations as a, as a founding team. And uh, that proverbial dining room table has become quite a bit of a legend within Bright Rock. You know, if you walk into the Bright Rock building, you'll see a dining room table in really? our reception. Absolutely. Is that where the business idea started? And, and it was literally started in one of my partners' uh, dining room around the table talking about the potential. And, you know, we, we were a group of individuals that uh, had lots of experience in the industry, um, lots of diverse experience, which I think is always critical when you when you um, want to start on that journey. You've got to... You know, your skills must be complementary, um, mm. Google. And, um, you know, launching in 2012, absolutely a, a unbelievable experience, taking that conceptual idea of our needs matched insurance product to market. And uh, as you've uh, explained, I mean, saw, saw lots of challenges over time, lots of uh, changes that we had to adapt to. Um, and uh, but but really an absolutely incredible journey um, being where we are today and uh, as you said you know um, closing that transaction with Sunlam towards the uh, um, first part of last year yes. um, really I think uh, culminated and I think put credit to what's been achieved but it really it's also a platform really to allow Right Rock to to really step up the gear, you know, yeah. and, and really take the business to that next level, which I'm really excited about. And uh, and yeah. And maybe tell us more about that. I'm starting at the end because in a moment I will ask you to take us back. But for many entrepreneurs, once you do uh, uh, have that partnership with a bigger business and essentially sell your stake to them, uh, some might review, you know, the future growth prospects with a sense of anxiety because truth be told, you're no longer perhaps as hands-on or is the case different for you at Bright Rock? Yeah, no, very, very different. So, um, you know, I think firstly, um, people might uh, might not be aware of this, but Sunlam already purchased a majority stake in Bright Rock back in 2017. So, mm -hmm. and and it was part of a, a journey. I mean, we we uh, really had a lot of time to get used to you know um, having such a large shareholder, institutional shareholder mm -hmm. involved in the business. And and you'll appreciate Google. You know, life insurance is a is a business that's got high barriers to entry it's capital intensive business yeah. um lots of infrastructure very regulated environment um so it so really just made sense to us back then and it gave us opportunity to really mature as a business um from a lot of aspects um and when that transaction was closed towards last year um it, it was really just a culmination of long conversations but it allowed us actually now to say um business as usual pretty much you know Sunlam bought into the team mm -hmm. Sunlam bought into what the brand is Sunlam also bought into what the product's offering and you know you, you said in your introduction it was a competitor and it's very much so yeah. and and what's amazing I'll share the stat with you the overlap between Bright Rock and Sunlam business in the market is is very small actually so we appeal to a very different market mm -hmm. and compl and combined forces means that we the largest um, market share in the broker market in South Africa. So it really made sense for them as a as a group to say, you know, we're backing 
Bright Rock, we, we, we're ensuring that they continue on that journey of innovation, of disruption. And so that works. And it obviously works for us because we, we can continue to deliver on our, on our, on our vision. Um, and in fact, it could accelerate and it is accelerating our yes. vision and objective. So it's, a, it's really a great partnership. And, you know, um, last thing I want to say about um, this transaction is Nassalam has become quite familiar and well known for supporting brands in various markets that they've entered and enabling that management team, enabling the brand and supporting and taking them from strength to strength. Mm. But you will always find the skeptics, you know, and, yes. and that's only time will sort that out, you know, and uh, and, and it's already a year later and Bright Rock has, has done exceptionally well in the last year and continue to do so, so. Definitely. I'm so glad that you've, you know, unpacked this because typically that's always what we think from the outside looking in that, yeah. whoa, okay, now that they've brought you out, is it still as as uh, malleable, as flexible and yeah. as, as, as independent and expert Exponential in terms of the growth that you can yeah. continue to find. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Skulk, this is part of the secret sauce that people don't know about Bright Rock. As you mentioned, largely distributing your product base through the stockbroker environment, which number one speaks to trust, which yeah. is something that I do want us to touch on. It's very important within the financial services space, but also just the level of exponential growth that you happen to experience, especially after the 2012 period. Yeah. Something was happening in your secret sauce there that certainly helped your <laughs> success. Look, Google, I think it was... Um, Many faceted. There wasn't. There's never one, you know, sil uh, silver bullet, as they, as we like to say, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was really, you know, that vision that we set out literally from that first day around that dining room table was very clear in our heads to be able to deliver a product um, that offered clients um, efficiency that's that's beyond measure. So in other words, being able to um, strip out waste for our clients, being able to offer them. Um, 40, 50 percent more cover for the same premium, and yes. it was simply by utilizing technology, um, stripping out waste that typically goes to waste later in time um, for clients. That immediately met, meant your price point and your ability to differentiate was was there. You yes. know, you had to that great value proposition. Then the ability to say, listen, we're going to be able to. Um, have the product adapt and change as your needs change. Unique. There's no product in the world that can do that from a life insurance point of view that's been 100%. underwritten. To say, if your needs change, you want to buy more cover, you want to change your cover from um, death cover to disability or vice versa, you can do that. Um, very, very powerful features within the product. Now, that was one component. The other key thing, you know, which I love to talk about from an entrepreneurial point of view is, if you look at the Bright Truck team, is we... we we built the business from the ground up on many components. It wasn't just a product. It was a new brand established in South Africa, yeah. which is a proudly South African story. And that's okay. huge, right? Because again, no, speaking massive. of the competitors, they've been in this industry for almost over a century. Over a century. Massive, right? Um, it was a fresh approach. It created for people to say, okay, there's a new kid on the block. Mm. Okay. Then also you had to develop a brand new product and then coming with that, a distribution team that adopted this technology in their heads. They had to relearn basically, mm. a sales team, mm. Le relearn. And, and the key thing around that was that whole team was galvanized around this vision of changing an industry, being an active ingredient to, let's be frank here, quite a concretized, um, people might from the outside argue a bit of a stale I industry, yeah. but being able to disrupt to change. and. And having people behind that, I think that was the secret source of people. If you walk into the Bright Rock office today and you ask, what is Bright Rock all about? I'm pretty sure you'll get an answer. You know, maybe not the same answer than me. And I really <laughs> hope it's not the same answer, sure. but an answer that they relate to that they've made their own. And that's the difference. I'm going to come back to the people sentiment in just a moment because it's so important, especially within the realm of work that you operate in, because you mentioned disruption. And that tells us that, you know, it's not just insurance, it's insurance, it's insurance, and you push a product and you move on. I'm keen to understand, as you talk about the life insurance environment, you mentioned stripping away some of the waste. And I think it's so important for you perhaps to take us into understanding that dynamic, especially for many black South Africans, when we think life insurance, we prioritize funeral cover, yep. life insurance, there's a perception that, oh no, I don't want people benefiting from my death. Yep. But what you've described in terms of this change, this evolving product that meets your needs as your mm -hmm. life develops and grows is something that many consumers need to be aware of, specifically, I guess, the middle black class, income class in South Africa. Yeah. I, I, I just absolutely love talking about this. Um, you know, there's there's such a opportunity, firstly, but there's also such a need out there. Um, mm. So if I talk about just traditional products, as you say, there's there are, there are uh, you know on the one um, side there's funeral products, and then there are what we call all the way to your 
underwritten products that uh, that offer your life cover, disability cover, yes. um, dread disease cover. And, you know, we operate in both those spaces. We, we, we've got a fantastic funeral product that we partner with funeral parlors in the market and really take people on their journey. And then we've got the fully underwritten product. Um, and, and that's where a lot of that differentiation came about where we said, listen, um, your traditional, let's call it life cover, um, Google, if you buy, go to your um, life company today, you buy 1 million rands worth of life cover mm. or 5 million or 10 million rands worth of life cover. But typically, typically that life cover will grow by one set rate or mm. it, by inflation. But the question you should ask yourself and your listeners tonight, you'll ask themselves, if I buy that 1 million rands worth of life cover, what I'm going to use it for? Is it enough? Is it going to settle my debt? Is it yes. going to cover my funeral? Um, and the moment you start asking that question, what is it for? Yes. The lights start coming on. Okay. Because if you think the purpose of life cover, it's very much to take care of your loved ones when you can't take care of yourself. Let's talk about, you know, it's not just a lump sum that's there to pay for a funeral, maybe pay for some executor's fees and that. Mm. It's very quite often the main need for that is covering debts. Mm. Because the last thing you want is to burden your loved ones mm. with the house that they live in there that's still incumbent through, through a debt to be able to pay that off through your life insurance. And it's a very cost-effective vehicle to do that. Second most important thing is we always ask people, what's your most valuable asset on your balance sheet? Mm. Especially youngsters. I'm talking youngsters. I'm still think, see myself as a youngster. But of course. if you're in your 40s, even that. And is it my property? Is it my car? Is it the business perhaps that I run as a sole proprietor? And, and, and that's what people answer. But yes. that's not really the right answer. Uh-huh. Because if all of us sitting here, we're earning a salary, we've got potential to earn still for the next 20, 30 years. Now, add up all your paychecks, your future paychecks. Mm -hmm. That is surely your most valuable asset. 100%. And the last thing you want to do is lose that ability to generate that income to, to, to be able to deliver on that asset. And that's what life insurance is all about. Yeah. Most importantly. And... The moment that you start appreciating that, if you look at the Brighter product, we, instead of just saying, Google, here's a lump sum and you do it whatever you want, we ask you, what are those needs? What are you really needing this cover for? And the moment you answer that question, we can say, Google, you need 10 million rands actually for covering your future paychecks if you want to make mm. sure your kids are okay. Because that number is big. Add up all your future paychecks for the next 30 years. You oh, get yeah. to a big number very quickly. Oh, I'm yeah. just picking a Especially number. Especially if you're increasing <laughs> it by inflation, right? Absolutely. And if you talk about your black middle class um, consumers, mm. you know, your needs as a, as a customer, a, a client, whether you earn um, a huge salary, a small salary, a middle, middle salary, I'm not going to put numbers to it because sure. it's relative to everybody. You, you've probably got kids. You've probably got debts. Your needs are the same. The quantum of those needs might be different. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you're in a financial product that can protect that. Funeral is, makes up one element of your needs. Mm -hmm. okay? And what we know, and Google, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm waxing off here. You must I love stop the passion. <laughs> Keep it coming. And you know what I'm learning from this, though, uh, uh, as well, Skalk, is as you're describing this, you're literally saying, don't just focus on a number and a figure that someone pushes in front of you through a product. You're actually saying, evaluate your life. Absolutely. What are the things that are important and that you currently take care of that will need to be taken care of in future that an insurance or risk cover product can actually provide for? And what I'm learning from this is that you're heightening the level of financial literacy, understanding, and responsibility. And, and you know, that's such a valuable point. I mean, I've seen it so many times with people put in front of the product, product sorry, and, and, they, and they get confronted with this product and we've designed the product that people actually can understand it themselves mm. without having advice. So in other words, and, and, and the advice component then can just complement that understanding, but it's key a client can understand. And the moment they get confronted with your needs and the reasons for, for wanting that cover, that's the moment that the question starts coming through. Yeah. And that's when advice, the value of advice really starts shining through. Think about it. Yes. If it's a one-sided conversation, you don't really get the best result. Mm. And, you know, I, I would love that clients, um, you know, or your listeners tonight, really just start answering some, some or asking some questions first of themselves and then of the advisor or the products that they want to consume to say, what do I actually need it for? Okay. What are the options available? Mm. I mean, we haven't even spoken about things like disability cover and that. What are the things that keep me awake at night? Yes. Is it cancer? Yes. Is it a stroke? 
Okay, those are all things that could el- can immediately overnight mm. put your whole world upside down, as we know. Exactly. Okay? And you want to have that peace of mind that if something happens to me, my journey, the ability to still generate that same asset that I spoke about earlier, my future paychecks, can continue. Yes, definitely. Okay, and um, and yeah, so I think the the the, the there's a huge opportunity from not just an education but also um, an exciting um, opportunity to partner with your um, your up and coming middle yes. class black middle class um, clients to educate them and to expose them to this this opportunity that's Definitely. there on various products. I'm appreciative that you've been so open about this because uh, as a black South African myself, having understood the dynamics around life insurance and, and uh, um, long-term risk cover uh, and also witnessing what is available in the market, there is that dynamic of mistrust, uh, huh? miscommunication and even a misunderstanding. So these kind of nuggets that you're sharing with us today actually, Skulk, open up people's understanding so much further for us to say, hold on, let's really reassess the, uh-huh. the environment. Uh, and this also speaks to trust and it comes back to the point around people uh, and the brokers that you work with. Yeah. Uh, there's typically a, a, a statement in the township where people say "Ah, they just sell insurance uh, because that's what we often associate with any kind of risk cover. I respect that. Yeah. You respect it but you've done something different about it at Bright yeah. Rock uh, by building that trust and not just pushing product. How have you managed that with your team yeah. continued going forward? In other words you're like an actuary with a heart man. <laughs> <laughs> you care. You, you know what you do? Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, especially when we've got induction of new people joining Bright Rock. Yeah. You, you know, I think what's critically important for people to appreciate about life insurance when, when they serve clients and customers out there, okay, is the realization that the product is built on trust because think about it. You're asking a client to pay their hard-earned premiums mm-hmm. every month to mm-hmm. an insurance company, okay? The only thing they get in return is a piece of paper today, a contract that mm-hmm. says, if something happens to you, we'll pay so they're putting their full faith as a customer into the hands of the life insurance company to actually take care of their most precious, yeah. their children, their family, their mm. funeral. So the trust in that is absolutely critical. And it starts with that humbleness inside a business that says we're here to serve. You know, one of our, our key cornerstones in the business is talk about careful, caring. Yes. So f- being full of care. Yes. And and we really talk a lot about that in our business and 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 we see ourselves as that responsibility of taking care of other people when they can't take care of themselves because that's the job of life insurance 100 percent. and and it's about moving that narrative away and you know i think yes there is a lot of unscrupulous behavior yes there's a lot of traditional mis-selling that's happened but the industry is starting to clean up it's becoming mm-hmm. much more professional and i think the industry you know is just preparing, you know, if you think about the value that the South African life insurance industry is putting out into the market, I'll give you one stat sure. um, that's, that might be interesting, is um, if you look just in the last six months of 2023, the, um, and these are CISA stats, um, the claim amounts that was paid by life insurance or financial services, from life insurance companies in South Africa for six months in 2023 was nearly 280 billion rand. Sure. That's bigger than the market cap of some listed companies there. And the, just to put that in perspective, the social grants paid by the South African government was around 260 billion. Okay? Mm-hmm. And that's not, a critical, it's not being critical of anything. It's just giving you a relative comparison of the significant value being added into um, the industry and allowing families to utilize those funds to, to as I said, continue their lives, take care of their family and that's a significant contribution and 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 in terms of that trust build up i think those discussions need to be had to say there's a huge value in that um and it's a very effective way to for families to protect their wealth to continue their wealth definitely um, and and build up their wealth um or protect their wealth while they're building that definitely if you've just joined us we are in conversation with skulk milan the ceo of bright rock a formidable uh long-term insurance company that has been in the south african market for just over 15 years now and of course has been contributing to shifting and changing the lives of south africans through uh, adequate financial advice good financial advice and of course uh, offering the right solutions that do meet your financial needs. Uh, Skulk, you mentioned something so important when it comes to trust. And as you said, the industry is clear, cleaning up, you know, uh, brokers are fully understanding the needs of their clients. But clients themselves have a responsibility to be truthful. And I say this because 
I know we don't typically bring these conversations up uh, uh, on air with uh, many of your counterparts in the insurance industry, but we really do need to understand that there is an opportunistic market out there that actively conducts fraud sure. and wants to have uh, fraudulent claims paid out for their own benefit, uh, uh, which does then add to the murkiness in the in the industry and increased regulation at times. Yeah, no, and 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 look, it is an ongoing uh, challenge, and and it will always be the case, you know, and. Um, but but I want to say on balance, you know, um, insurance companies have, have evolved um, and I think technology has evolved to the level that in, in I would say, um, most cases, I don't want to put a stat to that, sure. um, that is picked up these days, you Watch know, you. with access to data. I mean, in, in, in examples that you will talk about or you would refer to is you, you might see clients that might know that something is um, unfortunately and they've got a health concern and there's a severe health concern and then that's the point where they actually take out the insurance and they don't tell the insurance and then it's not insurance because you're going to claim from a known event mm. okay it's outside actually the definition of insurance insurance is not to create a windfall for something that you knew what's going to happen exactly right? and but these days these things get picked up whether it be through health data or data from your medical insurance or data from from any other type of source these things in most cases get and it's not worth it it's mm-hmm. absolutely not worth the cause the point that a claim then occurs it's too late to do anything about it yeah but if you start your policy and you do have some health concerns the best possible route is actually to be um transparent to be clear about your health condition because in most cases Google, the insurer could probably make a plan. Exactly. And it's not a penalty. And it's I think that's also important. People often think, oh, if you disclose that you smoke, no. oh, if you and disclose that you're diabetic, you'll be penalized for no. it. No. There, there can be a plan. And yes, there might be a loading on your premium. There might be an exclusion. Yes. And there's various tools, but you can still enjoy the cover that you that that you need for your family. And these are things that, that's, again, you talk about education and that. Um, it's simply in this modern era, it's simply not uh, something that uh, that goes without being being found out in most cases. Definitely. Yeah. Scott, this has been an intriguing conversation and it's going to continue. We just have to play ads. But if you've just joined us, we are in conversation with Scott Milan, the CEO of Bright Rock. If you haven't heard of them, where have you been? One of the most innovative companies within the long-term insurance space in South Africa that has uh, grown in terms of uh, entrepreneurship, grown in terms of market reach and penetration, so much so that uh, it is owned by Sanlam, who have been long-term partners of the business, essentially uh, growing with it in terms of its uh, uh, market uh, penetration. Do stay with us. We've been speaking to Skalk Milan, really giving us some insight into the dynamics of insurance. But in a moment when we come back, we'll dig a little bit deeper into the entrepreneurial journey, uh, how he continues to uh, find levels of excitement within an industry he's been in for a while. Uh, and of course, future growth prospects for Bright Rock. It's Kaya Talk. Monday to Thursday, 8 to 10 p.m. A formidable conversation that we're having this evening on Pivot Point, one of my favorite features where we speak to influential business leaders in South Africa and beyond, essentially about their business journeys and pivotal experiences that they've uh, faced within their careers. Tonight, we speak to Skalk Milan, who joins us as the CEO of Bright Rock. If you don't know about them, a company that was really brought together by individuals sitting around a dining room table and today day contributing to the livelihoods and sustainable financial education well-being and prospects of many south african families through its innovative solutions uh, and, and Skulp, just before the ad break we were really journeying around you know improving our understanding around insurance which as mentioned, is something that I'm very passionate about on this particular platform for all of us to have a better understanding of, hold on, what solutions are out there to meet my personal financial needs and objectives? And you were adding some context around, it's not about product offering. It's not about this pricing being more competitive than the other, but for Gugu, Skulk, uh, and individuals in their capacity to actually say, hold on, am I finding what I need? And that in itself highlights the level of financial education. Yeah, and, and it starts with a little bit of curiosity. And, and you know, um, in terms of financial literacy, I, I mean, mm-hmm. I know it's a topic that people are scared of, they're nervous about that, um, but, but we all manage our finances on a daily basis. Yep. You know, we've got expenses to cover, we've got income. So we're all financially re- literate. That's exactly. where it starts and ends. Um, So the moment that you then grab that and say, okay, let me just find out a little bit more. And we always advise clients to say the moment that you 
um, at that point you get nervous. Go and speak to somebody that knows. There are financial advisors, great ones that, that's there ready to, to help you. And get somebody that you relate to. Get somebody mm. that you can trust. I mean, you talk about trust. I spoke about the, the definition of an insurance contract is premised on trust. Yeah. So you, you need to find the comfort and that you trust not just the insurance company that you that you support but also the the advisor that really takes you on this journey and most often it's a journey i think that's also what a lot of us miss you know we 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 worry about the end game you know we think oh shocks if i don't get that level of cover or that solution i'm rather going to step away that's not the case start somewhere and build it and i think the same applies with building your um, investments, you know, buying investments. These days you can you can start from as little as a few few rands, you know, a few hundred rands exactly. and start start building up that portfolio. Um, but you've got to start somewhere. Exactly. And owning That's part of a share and improving that knowledge and absolutely. information that you're able to tap into. Skulk, I want to talk about your entrepreneurial journey. And as you mentioned, you were all gathered around a dining room table well over 15 years ago when this idea of Bright Rock essentially started. Truth is, you could have been a chief actuary at one of these other competing companies. What drove you to want to contribute to the economy in this manner? Yeah, I think, uh, Google, a few components... Um, is, is um, lies there in that answer. I think the first one is, you know, I, I had the privilege to be um, um, working for more than seven years by the time that we started having the conversations in a, in a, a, a discovery at that at that period. I mean, that's a well-known fact. So I don't, yeah. um, and gained huge amount of experience in product development and, and in that journey understood that there are definitely opportunities to innovate, definitely opportunities to change a market, you know, mm. and, and I'll just give you a, a personal ex- example to that. You know, I was looking at my personal policy at some point and, you know, where you project and you show these cover amounts that just goes into these telephone numbers over time True. and your premiums just run away um, as well. You know, it's in the, mm. um, and I realized, but nobody's going to be able to afford, I'm not going to be able to afford that level of cover at that point given the premium because you know you shouldn't look at your premium and think oh i'll be okay in 10 or 20 years time to be able to pay the premium True. you've got to say to yourself as a percentage of um, my spend that i'm willing to do like we talk about share of wallet yes right? what am i paying today and if i project my salary by inflation 10 20 years time what i would i be paying off my salary at that point in time mm. am i paying more or less or the same now the moment you start doing that and yes that requires some some advice and quite often you realize that there was a problem because Mm. life insurance most people want to hold it out for the rest of their lives Mm. that's the point that's why it's called life insurance Mm -hmm. right um and and the moment that that doesn't work anymore because i'm the product is not sustainable and we talk about sustainability these days quite in very diverse fields you know you got to innovate and change so that was the first driver the second driver was you know Having the absolute privilege to work with um, and, and partner with, with people that were just absolutely brilliant. Google, that's such an opportunity to just grab onto, you know. And Is this your business partner, Sean? My business, Sean, Suzanne. Yes. Um, you know, and, and, and it was a, an, an unbelievable, diversely um, complementary team that, that was just ready to take on. And then I think the other thing that's also a driver in most entrepreneurs is just that challenge of, can we do this? Yeah. You know? And you don't always appreciate the challenges that you'll face. You sometimes might even be naive, and most entrepreneurs will tell you that, you know, if they look back. Um, but that's part of that journey, and that's part of the excitement to be able to just go for it. And, Definitely. And, and, and work through every single problem and challenge, and know with the knowledge that you've got a team around with you, not around you, with you, that you can solve problems that come your way, mm-hmm. and you'll, you'll adjust. And, you know, that journey um, from that point, I mean, it was... Um, not just the product conceptual, as I said, the people, but also that challenge, um, challenger mindset made, made that journey very exciting. And, 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 you know, as you say, the, the growth came from that. And as a Definitely. result, yeah. and I find this so refreshing because it's exactly what entrepreneurs need to get going, but not just to get going, but to keep going. Yeah. Skalk, when this conversation and this feature on the show started, it was just after 2020 where the word pivot was certainly thrown around (laughs) in every conversation. And the reason why we call it pivot point is because we're well aware that there were a lot of pivotal lessons as well that came out of the pandemic. In your industry, I can imagine that there were a few. Yeah, no, absolutely. Look, 
I mean, we are still um, seeing a changed world since COVID, and I think everybody is. I yeah. mean, the way that we work, the way that we operate, the way that we think about um, life insurance has changed, yeah. you know. Um, I think uh, I studied uh, about pandemics and, and, and you kind of shelve it in the back of your mind. Ugh, you know, it's something that happened back in 1918. Like and black, black Swan event is black, black Swan event. season, huh? Because there's always something exactly. now. Um, and, and Google, no, nothing could prepare us. But, you know, I always try to take away the positives from which was absolutely horrific to, I would argue, every single family in South Africa has been was True. affected by that. Um, you know, the positivity from that is, again, as a, as a team, as a group of people, you know, got galvanized through that period um, in terms of having to overnight find solutions of how we're going to have people working remote. I mean, in this story, most, most people sitting here would probably tell you a similar, similar story. But coupled with that, you know, being still a relatively small business, you know, and, and a young business, seven years old at that point in time, just yeah. over seven years. Um, and then having to face um, a, a, a spike in claims, increase in claims, and they had to find unique solutions in that process. So was it a pivot for us to having to change direction of the business? No. Was it a realization of our e immense responsibility, mm. what we have towards families, to our clients out there? to be Following able to take up care on of that the, contract you following mentioned. Following up about, on that contract. Yes. And I think every single person with Imbright Rock, and I think the life insurance industry as a whole as well. Yeah. Um, never before have taken that responsibility as seriously from that point. Um, and and that we um, see changes systemically in the industry, yes. Um, you know, um, the whole industry looks at risk very differently. I mean, um, we are more careful than we were. I mean, the impact, the, the post-COVID impact is still there, present in claims. Mm -hmm. um, we, we are definitely seeing pickups in, in suicide top related claims mm -hmm. in the industry, which is horrific. I think the economy is still um, battling to recover. But um, we as a business were, as I said earlier, very clear on our vision, and we continue to, 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 to build on that vision. You know? so, definitely. Yeah. Skalk, it's been such a pleasure speaking to you. I've thoroughly relished in this conversation because you've really given us a full 360 view of how we need to evaluate our lives, the importance of uh, life cover, funeral cover, disability, dread disease, all aspects that do play uh, a very critical role in just ensuring that the things, the people and the assets that we want to take care of can actually uh, be restored even uh, in the event of death uh, or perhaps not being able to earn that income. You've yeah. highlighted our awareness of financial education, financial understanding, and most importantly, the responsibility that we also play uh, going forward and also shared some amazing insights on your entrepreneurial journey. Thank we you. wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Is and there a, a new well. company that you might launch soon or any breaking news here, <laughs> no. Skull? No, no, definitely no breaking news. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, we, we're looking forward to our next steps. We're continuing on our product journey. You know, yeah. we've got an um, a unbelievable uh, as I said, team, we've got a fantastic new generation technology inside the business, so very little legacy yeah. challenges. Um, so, so we're looking to build out our product set and our, and our product development. Um, but then also, we, you know, I'm a big believer, last point around, sure. of focusing on what you have and making sure you're the absolute best in that. You know, mm -hmm. So also making sure that all our client support, client service, because life insurance is very much about servicing our clients, is there. Um, and that's a big focus for us as well. So, yeah, so looking forward to the next year, two years, five years, um, to see where Bright Clock's going. Yeah. Well, we Look wish you us. all the best, Thank no you. doubt. And really, <laughs> I want to continue witnessing this proudly South African success. Absolutely. Such a pleasure speaking to you this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's Scout Milan, who's the CEO of Bright Rock, having uh, actively participated in sharing such phenomenal insight this evening on Pivot Point, not only about the uh, life insurance industry, the journey to entrepreneurship, and even a few lessons for you and I to fully re-evaluate what our relationship with money is, with wealth is and how we can adequately provide uh, for it. So do share your thoughts with us. I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. 063-688-0959 is where you can share your voice notes. For the moment though, it's 16 minutes to 8 o'clock.